Hey everybody, Den Herring here for Fish Den 365. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do a tackle warehouse unboxing. And you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned to the end because at the end of this video we're going to do a quick review on the five top reasons why we lose fish. So we'll throw that in there as well. So let's break out the knife and see what we got here. It's been a little while since I ordered these. They came quickly enough, but I just haven't opened them. I've been waiting for the opportunity to do it on this channel. I thought that some people might be interested in what I'm buying. And just in general, these unboxing videos go pretty well. People find them relaxing and oftentimes they like to watch it before they go to bed at night. So I thought I'd do one here for Tackle Warehouse. I Let's see, uh, let's see what we got here. So we'll cut this thing open with our handy dandy knife. That should do the trick. All right, pull away all of the uh, packaging here. I got uh, a number of different things. I got some multiple quantities and colors of items as well. Uh, first item on the top here is a Terminator Super Stainless Spinner Bait, half ounce. I, I was curious about these baits. I don't, I don't have the Terminator, this bait. I, I've had Terminators in the past and I've, I've liked them. So I thought, and this one looked like it was balanced the way I like. I like, I like it to be, I like these baits when they come in, to come in straight like this. Not Sometimes they'll come in like this. It just looks unnatural to me. I like them this way. And this bait, from what I understand, comes that, goes that way. It's got, I believe, I don't know if they still have these titanium wires or not, but that's what they used to be. They used to flex pretty good, and it used to cause some more vibration, at least through your rod. I don't know if the fish feel that vibration so well, but you can usually feel the vibration with these titanium arms with uh, through your rod pretty well. I like the head on the bait. It's got really nice natural looking eyes there, uh, and good uh, natural looking shad color here. It's got a small Colorado and a bigger willow. Nice bait. Well, let's see what else we have in here. We've got a couple of uh, Live Target. Uh, this is a special spoon called a Flutter Shad from Live Target. Let me open one of these up for you. I have not fished the Flutter Shad. You guys who watch my channel, you know I, I like spoons. I'm a big spoon fisherman. I fish them all year long, especially now in the fall and winter, but I'll fish them right through summer. Sometimes the conditions in summer can be fantastic for them. But this is an interesting one here, and I'm looking forward to, to getting it out of the package. <laughs> see if I can uh, show you guys this bait. There we go. So this comes with a with a swivel, a ball bearing swivel, to prevent line twist, and it's a spoon that's basically encased in plastic, and it's got this this head on it, uh, this plastic. Head, and my understanding is it makes the bait flutter real well but it also comes through the water on a straight retrieve quite nicely so I'll experiment with that in the in the near future I may be going out tomorrow and if I do I can at least put this on just to see how it works and we can talk about that at some point maybe I'll do a review on it but it's got a real natural looking eye in it uh, good paint job colors I got a couple of different colors here this one uh, this one here is called well, it's not written in English it's a live target bait. Oh, silver bronze is what this one's called. And then this one's probably black and silver. Yeah, silver black. I got one on here. So looking forward to trying out these new live target uh, spoons. It'll be interesting to see how they work. Here's another one. This one's even better still. This one is called silver blue. That looks a lot like the alewives that swim in my waters. Nice looking bait. And I chose three quarter ounce. So all of these baits are three quarter ounce. For a three-quarter ounce, it's not a very large profile. Pretty small. Nice tail feather on the hook. Uh, I'll probably change the hooks out, though. I like the Gamagatsu uh, EWGs, but and they're not. So, but we'll see. I'm a little confused about why these are in here. I do not remember ordering uh, Mustad triple grips. Uh, these are uh, 2x short, uh, strong. I don't know if these came in as bonuses. I didn't order these. I'll have to look at the at the. Uh, 
at the packaging uh, traveler and see if it's in there. But this is not a hook I would normally fish, although it's not a bad looking hook. It's got that real short, uh, short shank, which could be useful for certain conditions, but I don't know why they're in here. I didn't order these. <laughs> we'll have to see. Then I've got a bunch of these, uh, I mentioned a video about this, uh, these real deal shads from Big Bite Baits. This is a, a bigger one here. This is a, what I showed was a four inch. This is a five inch. Let me pull this out of the bag, for, out of the box for you here. And uh, you know, I, I talked about this on Topwater Tuesday. I like the bait. Look at that, it's a nice bluegill color there. I like to hook these things through the side, Texas rig it so that the hook comes out through the side, and then these tails can flap, and it looks like an injured bait fish. You can reel it along the top and get some churning of the water with those tails, but then when you kill it, this bait goes down and does that death circle spiral, and it just looks more like a bait fish than, say, a horny toad would. Got the bait fish profile. So, you know, I have that, I love throwing that toad in the, in the pads. I'm always looking for some new advantage or something a little different. And this year I'll be throwing these in the pads a little bit to see how they do. Soft plastic. You could also rig them the normal way, straight like this, and they have a nice belly uh, opening so that you can rig them with a, a belly weighted hook if you wanted to. Nice looking bait. Looking forward to playing with those this year. So I got that in the in this bluegill color. Here's a shad color, which I've used before. Just another bluegill one. I got two of a lot of these. Another shad one here. Here's a different kind of shad. There's these kind, hopefully, in this lighting, I don't know if you can tell, they're slightly different. These baits, so one of them is called shad, and the other one is called gizzard shad. So, very similar. I might have overdid it with them. I got uh, quite a few here. <laughs> Here's another one. And then I've got uh, a golden shiner color here. They call this one golden hitch. I like to fish some of the Pocono mountain lakes and I really think that golden shiner color, let me pull one out, maybe you can see it a little better. It, it, you know, the, the Pocono mountain lakes, there are a golden shiner in them and those bass prefer them a lot. They call them roaches. The bass prefer them because, uh, you know, they have that soft ray dorsal fin. They're easy to swallow, much easier than a bluegill. Look at that bait. That's really nice. That's, uh, that's going to catch me some fish there up at Chihola and some of the uh, other uh, Pike County uh, Tannic Water Lakes up there. Nice bait. And I don't know if this is a mistake or not. I don't remember ordering this in the smaller size, but this is a, a three inch. No, yeah, a three inch, no, four inch uh, in the uh, golden shiner color. May have ordered it for flipping and pitching up there. Got a ton of them. Here's another one. Uh, this looks like that shad color again, gizzard shad. What else we got in here? Oh, here's another one. <laughs> Man, uh, well, oh, I remembered why I got so many of these. They're on sale. They're part of that... Uh, 12 days of Christmas sale, they're only like $2.30. So I thought, you know what, I don't, I have a few, but I'm running low. Usually when I do this, when I have baits that I like, that I've caught fish on, that I know are good, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure I have them. But I will get my, I'll get my inventory down a bit until a sale like this goes on. And then when I find them, you know, I'll buy them and stock back up again. And that's what I was doing with this. And uh, the Terminator spinner baits, I was confident that uh, that those baits were going to be something that I would want more of, so I bought two more of those. These are all half ounce. The the uh, spinner baits that I got, every one of them I think is a half ounce size. Oftentimes though, I'll put a trailer on them and that'll slow their fall if I want to get a slower fall. And yet another Terminator, number four. I think I got all the same colors. Not sure why I bought four of them, but. Why not? They're on sale. Everything I got here was on sale, so... Except these hooks. <laughs> I did not order these hooks. I don't know where they're all coming from. And that'll be interesting to see. So here's a... Here's a Z-Man bait. This is the stuff that's got that uh, Elastec, or whatever it's called, where it stretches real good and also floats real high. 
This is a nice uh, crawfish profile. It's, man, I'm messing it up getting it out of here. It's called a Helicraw Z. And uh, I like this particular color in their other baits. Pull this apart here so you can get a look at this bait. Makes a great trailer on the back of a jig, but you could just fish this uh, without any skirted jig, just on a jig if you want. Uh, I think this bait is nice. It's gonna, when it sits on the bottom, it'll it'll stand like this with the craws up because it has this tendency to float. So wherever you have the weight, the rest of the bait floats upwards. And the color is called the Deal. Uh, I like this color. It's got this uh, little bit of green pumpkin. It's got like a pearly blue in it and some pearl in it. And sometimes the crawfish, especially their bellies, get to be that color. And uh, it's, a, it's a good color. It's also a good bait fish color as well. I really messed this up, so I'm going to put it back in here the right way so they don't lose it. Don't get all messed up with their shape. So take a minute or two to put these back the way they should be. Looking forward to trying that that uh, that craw pattern this year. Looks good. Good color. All right, what do I got here? Um, I kind of was interested in this. This is a little bit of a different bait. It's like a zoom flute. This is made by 13 Fishing, and, and I had an interest in this, and I wanted to experiment with it, so I bought it. And so this is a zoom flute. I mean, I wish it was a zoom flute. This is a 13 Fishing. It's called the Jerk Rabbit Ear Tail. Now let me pull one of these out and get a better look at it. It gives these fish just something a little different. You know, sometimes I think the fish get used to seeing things. And even though the fluke is such a natural looking bait, so many of those get thrown that I think that maybe it's a good idea to throw something that looks a little different. And so, oh God, it smells awful. Ugh. I'm not sure what that scent is, but hopefully the fish like it, I don't. Anyway, <laughs> I like the look of this bait and I really like this color. It's got like a green pumpkin top. It's got like a bunch of purple speck in it and it has, uh, it's got a uh, pearlescent belly. It does have a slit in the belly, but it's a little, it's not very, I would take my knife and make that much deeper. This is tough plastic. So the first thing I notice with this bait is, I think it'll, it'll hold up very well. I think I read in reviews that it holds up good. I don't know, it seems like it would. Maybe these tails come off a little easy. Not sure, but these tails, they have a little bit of a weight at the end of them, a little bit of a knob at the end. And uh, so the bait probably will not dart quite as well as a normal fluke will, but these tails may have a different kind of action and it might be a good bait to fish rather slowly. I can see myself fishing this and it's a little heavier than a fluke in the winter time or in early spring when the water's just warming up and uh, this could be a, this could have a little bit of a different look and, and uh, and be decent. But that smell is just different. I haven't smelled that smell ever before. Let's see if they, uh, if it says what that scent is on it anywhere here. It does say that it causes cancer in California, but then everybody, everything causes cancer in California, so that means absolutely nothing. This uh, color is called Royal Irishman. <laughs> That's an interesting color. It doesn't say anything about the scent. It just says Ichthyology Lab, Tampa, Florida. Uh, oh, it calls it donkey sauce. Well, it smells like a donkey too. It's ugh, not so good. Anyway, uh, that is the 13 fishing rabbit ear tail. Fluke style bait, I'll call it. Put it back in here. Interesting to play with that this year a little bit, maybe. <laughs> Truth is, you know how fishing is. I might not even get a chance to throw it this coming year. Who knows? I need I need more time on the water. I gotta I gotta retire or something. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> where's the other one? Got two of those. I thought. Oh, it fell down here. Out of control here, folks. The other color I got was called Mojito or Mo Mojito. It's kind of like a smallmouth magic color. Very similar to smallmouth magic. So we'll can play with that one too. Okay, what else I got here? I got a Gambler Cane Toad in June Bug color. So uh, 
You know, I've, I've read good things about the Gambler, the uh, the Cane Tone Coat. The, the Cane Toad definitely has uh, a louder action than the Horny Toad. So I bought these to use when the conditions were such that maybe there was a little chop on the water and I needed a little more sound. It's not a big bait. It's just, as far as the length of it, it's very, very short. But uh, I like the tails on it. I, ha I like the fact that it's a very flat bait. So you'll have a lot of, uh, a lot of play in that hook to, to hook the fish. I'm thinking that it's gonna be, maybe need a smaller than a five aught, maybe a four aught. I like the, the, uh, those owner hooks that with the twist lock in them. So that's what I would be throwing this on. And hopefully I'll get to play with this this year. This has that little bit of that uh, garlic scent. Well, between all these scents, it's like a chemical factory in here right now. I'm not crazy about how they're just thrown haphazardly into the bot into the bag here. You want to keep these tails as straight as you can, so uh, hopefully they won't bend. But if they do, the trick to do that, the trick to handle that is get to a pot of water, get it to boiling, just take it under boil, and then throw your your baits in there and and for just for a few seconds and then pull them out and that everything straightens out when you do that and you can fish them again then. So that's the Gambler Cane Toad, four inch Cane Toad in June Bug color. I think we'll do a future Top Water Tuesday video on that. Good chance of it, I'll tell you that right now. That'd be a good live action. All right, what do we got here? Here we got an S waiver. I had, I was curious, you know, I have the S waiver. I really like the S waiver in the, in the bigger size. Uh, let's see. I think this one's called Light Hitch. This is the 168 size S waiver. But I was curious about the smaller ones. You know, how do they work? So I bought a smaller, this is a 120 size. Let me pull it out of the package for you here. If I can get the dang thing out. Man, don't make it easy. So here's the smaller size, ouch. Ah. I've got it in bluegill color. Boy, those hooks are sharp. And you can see it's quite a bit smaller. And the reason why I was curious about this is I wondered how it would be uh, on certain conditions just throwing this for smallmouth bass in real clear water lakes. Um, so I'm gonna find out because I'm gonna throw it. If it works like the bigger S waiver and I can get it down a little bit, maybe I can weight it a little, I'm gonna catch some smallmouths on it. All right, what else we have? We bought two packs of the Gambler Cane Toads. Now, I bought two crankbaits, but I see I only got one here, so I don't know if one's on back order. This is a Greenfish Tackle. This is a, a, not a square bill, but it is a wooden crank, and I believe it's handmade. It's called High Rock Shad. It's, I think it goes down to about six feet. Uh, it has a really nice, this particular color has a really good, uh, you know, uh, I would say golden shiner color to it as well. And I just thought, looking at it and reading about it, that it seemed to be a very well-made crankbait. It's one of these more custom style bank, uh, baits. Greenfish Tackle is located in Grovetown, Georgia. And uh, I'm going to try this bait out and, we'll, you know, if I like it, we'll talk more about it. It's got one of those real, real super, super, super thin circuit board lips on it. So that should make it quite lively, being that it's a, it's a wooden bait. Totally silent. I like that. I'll play around with this lure some. Now I know I ordered a second one of a different color, uh, but I don't see it in the box. So that could either is a mistake or it's on back order. Let's take a quick look here. Well, maybe I only ordered one. I might have pulled it, you know, maybe I thought why order two until I test one, because I never used greenfish tackle baits. And there's only there's only one on here and I got it. So maybe uh, maybe I didn't order two, and I, but I thought I did. Now let's see about these hooks, because I did not order the hooks. Live target flutter spoons, 13 coalition, big bite baits. Nope, nope. So, Oh, the, uh, the live target uh, was a promo. This the, the, the live target. 
Well, it does say Live Target must have triple grip, so I guess Live Target bought them. Bought must have? I didn't know that. Anyway, these were part of a promo, so uh, I got some free hooks, and they're, they're good quality hooks, so we'll check those out. Those shorter shank hooks, they could be good when you're throwing a something like a blade bait, something where you don't want the hook to be hanging down very far, so it's less likely to hang up on the bottom. On the other hand, I don't know how well they hold the fish. At least they have the, the bend in the hook, so that helps, but they got a shorter shank, uh, and so it's hard to know. All right, I do have a few more baits left in here. Let's take a look at what we got. So I ordered one of these. This is another big bite bait. This is a line through swim bait. Uh, I bought some of these last summer and used them and really liked them. This is a different color. This one is called Sunny Shad. I think I can pull this out pretty quickly for you here. Show it to you. Now the way you fish this is there's a little tube here and your line comes right out the belly and then you tie it to a treble hook and one tine of the treble hook goes in here and the other two are, are hanging below the bait. Look at that color. That looks like, and this bait does work. It gets really good reviews so I know it catches fish. This one has a really natural look to it. Uh, I'll be catching some fish on this. I like that little bit of chartreuse in there. Uh, this is a really natural looking one that uh, I'm going to enjoy fishing this coming summer. I'm going to catch them on this. I, I like the color better than the ones I have. It comes with a treble, but it's not the treble I would prefer, so I will be putting my own treble on there. All right, now I've got some baits I haven't ever played with before. These are, uh, this is coalition baits. And uh, take a look at these things. called the Dine uh, 4.25 inch natural natural shad these are these are uh, half ounce baits now let me pull one of these out uh, this thing uh, I don't know what to make of it it was on sale so I figured ah, I gotta try this to see what it looks like the bait has a really good shad profile to it a good shad color really nice natural natural eyes I could add a little bit of red on the gills the the way the the way this plastic is set up maybe you can see that i'll try and magnify it it actually looks like scales it's a scale pattern on the bait uh, it does have a very nice little belly slot uh, i can see myself catching fish on this bait this looks a lot like the alewife and the and the gizzard shad that swim around in the lakes that i fish so yeah i have to play with this i'm not quite sure i think they tell you how to rig it maybe with a uh, you know one of the owner beast hooks, uh, I'll have to look into that because I, I don't remember everything about it at the moment while I'm doing this video. But for whatever reason, I figured I must have had enough confidence in them to get two packs right away because that's what I did. Yeah, I, I, you know they're not cheap. They come three in a pack though for ten forty nine, and I did get two packs of them so. Pretty cool looking bait here. I'll have to play around with these and let you know what I think of it. I don't know how the swim will be with that tail, but I will say this, it's got it's got a very flexible end here, so I would expect it to have some swimming action to it. There may even be a video online about it. I'll have to take a look and uh, figure it out. The reason why I got these is I'm always looking for something to replace this bait. This bait is a killer. It's a Huddleston uh, weedless shad. And I'd like to get something in a bigger profile. This is four inches. You can see the difference. You know, this is a bigger meal, right? It's a little bit longer, about a half inch longer, but it's a much deeper body. And so uh, I got a bigger profile with this bait and that's exactly what I'm looking for because I catch a ton of fish on this bait, you know, a bunch of different ways. Uh, I'll probably do an upcoming video on this again sometime soon. And if this thing works the way I hope it does, I'll be doing a video on it, on it as well. All right, so we got through the unboxing. Now let's do the quick review that I promised at the end of the video about the five reasons, five top reasons we lose fish. Now I've done an extensive video on this and I will link it right up here. I went into detail about these top five reasons. I said them in priority order and what I thought was a priority order and went into detail. Tonight it's just gonna be a review, but you can watch the, uh, the, the video that I have in detail if you'd like up here. 
Okay, number one reason for why we lose fish is we're using the wrong equipment. So the equipment that we have is our tools, right? That starts with our rods, our reels, the line we choose. And so if you're using the wrong equipment, you've heard the statement before, you don't want to take a knife to a gunfight, same kind of thing. You know, if you're out there fishing a lily pad field and you're using a finesse drop shot spinning rod, you're not likely to gonna get any big fish in that way because they're gonna get into the pads on you and you won't be able to get them out. And same with the, you know choosing the right lines, the right hooks for your baits. So that's the number one reason, using the wrong equipment or wrong tools for the job. The number two reason, and for some people this is number one, it's, it's lack of preparation or, or improper preparation for fishing. So what do we mean by that? Well, you know, you have to tie the best knots that you can tie. If you tie a weak knot, you have a weak link. You have to choose the right lines for the right situation. So, you know, and so if you don't prepare properly, then you're, you're not likely to catch the, the amount of fish that you would if you were fully prepared. And that means maybe changing your leaders now and then, changing your knots, cutting your line if it's starting to get, you know, you're fishing over rocks that, are there, that has a lot of abrasion. You should be checking your line now and then, making sure that you you're, have the preparedness to make sure that you're ready to go with the right stuff when you get out on the water. Sharpening your hooks is another big one. You wanna make sure that your hooks are sharp and not dull. Being prepared makes a huge difference. Some of the best fishermen when they're asked, you know, the professional tournament guys, when they're asked what makes them more successful than others, a lot of the times they'll answer preparation. Two great examples of that were the late great Aaron Martins and Kevin Van Dam today. Number three reason, improper hook set or improper positioning when you're setting the hook. Yeah, if you don't get a good hook set on those fish, you're not as likely going to get them to you, get them to the boat or get them to the bank. So, uh, and I go into detail about how that happens and, and the proper positioning for hook setting. So make sure you take a look at that longer video if you have an interest in that. The number four reason is, is your technique for fighting the fish. You know, once you have a fish on, there are methods to fighting the fish, right? You, you wanna make sure that you do the right things. What you don't wanna be doing is moving your rod back and forth like this or allowing the fish to have slack between you and your rod tip. You, you, you know, there, you, you wanna keep them down into the water and not jumping a lot, especially if you have a heavy lure on. The way you do that is you actually dip your rod down into the water and you reel very hard. That's when you feel a fish coming up. When the fish is going down, you want your rod in a higher up position. So there's ways to techniques to fighting a fish that matter, otherwise you can lose them. Also, are you gonna net the fish or are you gonna land it by hand? All that is covered in that video as well. And then the number five reason is sometimes crap happens. You know, sometimes with those old bumper sticker stickers, sh happens. Well, sometimes you can do all the right things and still you'll lose a fish here and there. And sometimes you'll have a day where things just go wrong. I had a day like that this year where I just couldn't get a fish to the boat until the very end. I was at Lake Juan Paul Pack. If you have an interest in that, I'll link that up here as well. Well, that's it for the video. I got a ton of stuff here to put away, as you can see. Looking forward to getting out there and trying it and experimenting with a lot of stuff coming up this year. If you like that video, please give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, share with your friends, comment. I'd love to hear people's comments. It's, uh, it makes a community of good fishing uh, information going back and forth. It's probably the thing I like the most about the channel. I hope to get out there soon. Hopefully we'll see you on the water. Be safe out there, and as always, may God bless your fishing endeavors.